Hi everyone and welcome to The Crow Show brought to you by Chemist Warehouse. I'm Mark Dickley. And I'm Alana Smith. With 18 rounds played, the season is just racing away. Only five left to end the minor round. Coming up in today's show, we'll take you out in the middle for a taste of game day. Hey, hey, son, just come back up your mark a bit, huh? And get ready to take a holiday with Eddie Betts. But first, will we ever see the return of State of Origin football? Rugby League's three-game State of Origin series again stirred fierce interstate rivalry, attracting large crowds and huge television audiences. It was a concept that worked well for the AFL between 1977 and 1999, but that was the last time club allegiances were put to one side in favour of state loyalties. So, would past and present players like to see the game revived? Stones, Patton's got him. Tingay again. Oh, gee, it's good footy. It's tight and it's tough. We like that. We like that one event during the year that brings us all together where we get to watch the best feed the best. Don't tell me, Gary's He's got it. Hamlet's kicked his ball. You speak for most of the boys, especially the ex players, it's really sad to see it not here. Without a doubt, I get chills now even thinking about whenever you mention it. Memories of the uh, classic games between particularly South Australia and Victoria were just fantastic. Andrew Jarman, terrific stuff. What grand finals and state games are all about. Physical contest that neither player shirks. Well, Jars and I talk about it a lot here. I mean, he's got such a great history in state of origin footy. To have Victoria play South Australia at Adelaide Oval on, say, a Friday night would, or a Saturday night on a bye weekend would just be unbelievable. South Australians are away. Growing up through the 90s, obviously, that's when it probably peaked through late 90s, so it's obviously great to watch. Triggins has kicked towards full forward, little push, not paid. Roger off the ground, stuck on the river. For it to get back, big miracle on all fronts. Uh, the AFL have to want it back and I think they have to dictate it to the, co the clubs and the coaches. Whilst uh, we always dream, I think uh, reality was, uh, is going to be very difficult to, to take the next step. I think players would like to uh, participate. I think clubs are strongly opposed to it. For me, obviously club footy is number one in AFL. That's what we've always grown up with, you know, wanting to um, win the premiership and you don't want to jeopardise that um, in any way. It says a lot about the AFL competition when we bring these players together and in a one-off they can produce such a match. Certainly a huge highlight on my calendar each year when I played. The AFL says State of Origin football could only ever return with the approval of all the clubs, coaches and players. So I think we all know what the likelihood of that is. Apart from players and umpires, those who get closest to the action are the runners. Let's join one of the Crows runners in a Sandful game to hear the type of messages they deliver and catch a glimpse of what they see. So uh, I'm the runner here for the, for the Crows in the SNFL and uh, it's pretty full on, like there's obviously there's four coaches up at the box that are trying to deliver messages when they can and obviously with the rotations as well so I'm in and out a fair bit and it's a pretty important role because it's a message coming direct from the coaches straight to the player. Yeah obviously the runner plays an important part in on game day, he uh, portrays the messages we want from the from the box so he, in essence he becomes another coach on the, ga on the ground for us. Rob? Robbie, when you get a chance, you're up, Rob. It's the other part of it is, you know, sometimes we're frustrated up top, so he has a role to be able to get that message to the player without um, being too negative um, and making sure there's clarity with that message. It's hard to say how many we give. We tend to not send the runner out for, for skill errors or, or skill perspective uh, messages, but what we send is structural or more so how we want the guy to play that position. Curly! Oh. Wiggy in charge, Curly! Curl! Curl! Wiggy inside! Wiggy, go inside! Go inside! Robin, can you get to the ruck? Can you get to the ruck? Uh, definitely uh, has kept me fit. Um, 
it's probably changed a little bit since when I was playing with all these rotations over there these days. But yeah, it's um, definitely keeping me fit and uh, keeping me weight down. I just uh, do this on the weekends now, but as a general rule, I used to just run probably a couple times a week. But now that I'm involved here and doing probably about 10 k's a game, so uh, it's keeping me fit enough. It's good to be just involved again, and it's been five years since I was playing, but um, just to be out there and, and get that bit of involvement with football, it's, uh, it's been good. Hey boys. Now, a question for you. Who did the Crows take as their second pick in last year's national draft? Alana will introduce him after the break. And a reminder of why it's so hard to win at Geelong. We played him in 2006 or 5 when we were a pretty good side, but you know, Canadian Park's a tough place to play. Welcome back. Tom Duday is another player to follow the basketball path to AFL football, taken as the Crows' second selection in the 2015 draft. The 19-year-old from the Geelong Falcons has only been playing football for three years, but excels in one-on-one -on -one defending. Tom stood out at the AFL draft combine, finishing fifth in agility and ninth in relative vertical jump. He also possesses a fierce, competitive spirit. Kick out towards the pocket, chopped off nicely. That's Tom Duday defensively working really well before the Geelong Falcon taken at 17 in the draft last year by Adelaide. From my first few games, I was pretty disappointed in how I was playing and then slowly been improving and now I'm getting to the point where I'm playing some consistently good footy, uh, getting you know good reviews from the coaches and stuff, so hopefully it's just around the corner. Good, good. Pods and Paul Thomas have been real good. Um, they've just been helping me out. Tomo more so with my kicking. Pods and Tomo together in my game reviews and making sure I'm improving each week. Uh, continue to work on my weaknesses. Look at that. Worked beautifully. Tom Duday crossed, took 12 marks last week and intercepts the ball magnificently well. Doing all the work with Pods and Tomo about positioning during the pre-season really helped and then made sure I was ready for the bigger bodies I was playing on, especially playing on JJ and Tex at training. Helps you with getting your body right. Give away a few kilos most weeks unless I'm playing on the smaller blokes, which has happened from time to time because I do play on smalls and talls. But I try and just use my athleticism rather than my body. So if, if I'm coming back with the flight or I'm running up and jumping rather than just trying to get into a one-on-one. -on -one. Growing up in Geelong, you either go for Geelong or you hate Geelong. So I was a Hawthorne man and yeah, wasn't, wasn't too big a fan of Geelong. Definitely be going for the Crows against them. Uh, can't say I'll have any, uh, any want for Geelong to win at all. Leading into last night's game, the last time the Crows won at the Cattery was back in 2003. Former Crows ruckman turned assistant coach Matthew Clark talks us through that rare success. It's a bit of a concerning stat, isn't it? We're reflecting on a game in 2003, so uh, yeah, the last few years haven't been great, but we did get a win this day. So obviously Ayersie had come from Geelong, and uh, when we went back there in 2002, some of the crowd gave him a bit of advice through the through the window of the coach's box, which uh, got him a little sort of uh, hot under the collar. So he, uh, he let him know when we got the win in 2002, and obviously we were going back in 2003, hoping to repeat the dose. So it wasn't a great first quarter, and uh, probably Geelong had you know clearly had the better of it. Back to Chapman, the one two. Can he finish it? Runs to 30. Drop punt. He's home. We had a great midfield crew at that stage. Obviously, I think uh, Tyson Edwards had a really good game. Mark Bickley got a bit of the ball, and you know, probably you know our forwards stood up in a, on a tough day. So Ian Perry and Scotty Welsh was back in the team. He ended up kicking three, so it was a good day. Goodwin back of the pack, burns out, sprints and spins around. He likes his chances. Ronnie, welcome back to town. I think uh, Gallagher was in his first season and had a you know kicked a great goal late, which got us back over the line, which was really important for us. Play on now, Gallagher. Can ice this game? Can he? It's been a great era for them, uh, you know, obviously since 2007, but even before that, we, we played them in 2006 or 5 when we were a pretty good side, but, you know, Canadian Park's a tough place to play. They get a great home support and, uh, and they've made it a real fortress. A certain Mark Bickley was best that day and Scott Welsh kicked three goals. Well, in recent weeks, we've seen what happens when players swap their Guernsey for an apron. 
So thanks to Thomas Farms, let's go into the Crow's Kitchen again for what should be one way or another, a culinary experience. G'day guys, uh, here today uh, to hopefully share a, a couple of uh, insights from my cooking journey over the time. Um, and obviously cook a couple of really nice meals from Thomas Farms Kitchen. So today I'll be cooking a hearty harissa lamb rum with magnificent mash. So I've got all the ingredients that we need for this meal in this box here, um, nice and easy. When I came over to Adelaide as an 18 year old, um, out of home, away from mum and dad, um, it kind of forced me to uh, learn how to cook. Alright guys, well we've got the uh, potato and cauliflower boiling away over there. We've done the beans here. Um, it's now time to treat this piece of meat with the respect that it deserves. A little bit of salt and pepper, olive oil. So you cook the lamb how you like it. Yeah, just a, a few minutes on each side should uh, do the trick. Um, obviously depending how thick your piece of meat is. Alright, I'm just going to allow that to rest for a few minutes. And while I do that, um, Try and create this magnificent mash. Just a little bit of olive oil in there. All right, guys, well, that's all the elements done and dusted. 20 minutes, as easy as that. Um, now let's get on and try and make it look like this picture here, hey? Just the finishing touch here with the sauce, with this from the stock and the pan juices, and just uh, gently pour that. Not too bad. Very good. Stay with us. Still to come on the Crow Show, Brody Smith gets up close with the son of a gun. And what's in a training venue? We compare Adelaide Oval and Football Park. Tough young defender Jake Kelly has already earned a reputation for his fearless attack on the footy. What else would you expect from the son of Collingwood Premiership player Craig Kelly? So what happens when Aussie Ripper Roast puts him up against fellow backman Brody Smith? All right, Jake Kelly, thanks for joining us on the Ripper Roast. Brody. <laughs> Is that all you got for me? Yes. Just Brody. <laughs> all right, um, Very cool. you're in your third year of footy now. Yep. Um, you obviously played some games last year, um, spent some time in the SNFL this year. What's been, yep. your, I guess, your focus points this year and your room for improvement? Yeah, I've had to really start taking a game on offensively and um, defense sort of comes naturally to me. Um, that's been the main um, area this year that I've really had to try and work on that's coming along. Yeah, um, your defense, obviously, you've been renowned for at the club. You've got the nickname Ball for yeah. Ball of the Gate. Um, <laughs> Is that something that's always come naturally to you, or is a pretty competitive person uh, at training early? Yeah, I guess I'm a competitive person, but um, yeah, obviously first day I went too hard in the warm up, and Daniel Sully came up with Bullard Gate and sort of stuck ever since then. So, no, I've sort of had to pride myself on that at the club, and um, yeah, I've really tried to make that my trademark. And off field, uh, what do you like to get up to away from the club, get away from footy? Playing a bit of golf at the moment. Um, other than that, seeing the boys, relaxing, Netflix. <laughs> Bit of golf mostly, but yeah, that's about it. Other than that, just relaxing. Yeah, how's the golf going? You got a handicap? Uh, no, I haven't got a handicap as yet, but um, I played with your old man a few months ago, and he'll tell you that I wasn't very good. So yeah, I'm he did not have work, no. glowing reports no, for Jake was, Kelly on the no, golf course. It's a work in progress. <laughs> yeah. Um, how's the savings going? Savings, yeah, yeah. Um, not good this year because I haven't played a game, so it's um, pretty bad. No, it's all right. I've saved a bit in my first few years, so yeah. Um, yeah, not as good as you. So, is that why you chased the fifty dollars so hard? In fifty, it? yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was um. Oh, seriously embarrassed. Yeah, your eyes definitely lit. Yeah, it was very. Yeah, made my day for a lot of ten seconds. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, Jake Kelly, thanks for joining us. No worries, pleasure. The Crows train at two venues, Adelaide Oval and Football Park, and each has its merits. They also play at a number of different grounds across the nation. Revolution Roofing takes us under the coach's roof to find out how the size of different AFL venues affects their tactics and game style. 
Well, when we made the move to Adelaide Oval, uh, obviously Amy Stadium here has been a you know great ground for us. But we changed the dimensions of the boundary out there, so it mirrors Adelaide Oval. So our guys get used to the dimensions of Adelaide Oval because obviously we play half our games there. When you travel interstate, clearly there's there's differences. Uh, the MCG much wider, and therefore defensively and and in attack that that changes things slightly. This week we're down at uh, Cadinia Park, and you know that's a little bit different again. It's actually slightly narrower than the Adelaide Oval. It's the narrowest ground in, in, the, in the country. Probably the MCG and, uh, and over in Perth, Domain Stadium are the two that are significantly different. In those two situations, yeah, we do, we do modify things slightly. SCG is probably another one that's really compact, so um, there are slight tweaks. It's not going to be the, the major emphasis of your, of your training week, but it might be something that you just uh, adapt one or two drills just to reflect the different dimensions of the ground. It's getting uglier for Norwood now. Adelaide has doubled their score. Probably the, the place where we do see a bit of difference is when we go back and some of our guys transition from SANFL through into the AFL team. So obviously in the SANFL there's a number of grounds which are a little bit more compact and so the style of footy is a little bit different. Uh, probably a little bit more congested, a little bit more um, you know, re revolving around the contest as opposed to open running games. After the break, we'll look for our face in the crowd. And where does Eddie go to get away from it all? So far this season, Crows players have taken us on a variety of holidays, some to the other side of the world, others just down the road. This time, thanks to Flight Centre, we'll go with Eddie Betts to his favourite destination. My favourite holiday destination will be New York. I, uh, I love the Big Apple. Um, I went there a long time ago just with me and my wife Anna, and then we went there last year, at the end of last year, with the kids. So. Yeah, we love, we love New York. Well, we were there for the international rules um, and we played for Australia. So we, we trained a lot at Central Park and we went to the basketball, the hockey, and we toured around, which was fantastic. And yeah, like I said, we love, we love New York. It'll be Italy, Europe, um, and Rome. So we're actually going there at the end of this year. So looking forward to that. We've got two weeks over there and it should be fantastic. Okay, now we're on the lookout for our crow's face in the crowd. Thousands of you to choose from, so who is it going to be? What about you? If you recognise yourself, email the club by 5pm next Wednesday, be ready with some photo ID and you'll receive a merchandise pack courtesy of Chemist Warehouse. Looking ahead to next week and we'll delve into the archives for a huge finals win over Essendon. So Adelaide win by a record margin and inflict a record defeat on the Bombers in the first of the finals. Now don't forget to check out the club website afc.com.au for all the latest Crows news and interviews and why not follow the club on Twitter as well. That's all we have time for today. We hope you enjoyed the show brought to you by Chemist Warehouse. We look forward to your company again next Sunday at the later time of 1 o'clock. That time again, 1 o'clock next Sunday on 7 before we play the Bombers. We'll see you then. Bye for now.